I just got scammed out of $280. Now, as I tell this story, you're going to wonder, what in the heck does this have to do with comic books? But I promise I will make the connections at the end. So the other night, my whole family was playing Yahtzee. And it was starting to get late, and so I knew that we didn't have time to finish before the little kids needed to go to bed. And so I told everyone that we could go around the circle three or four more times, but then we were going to have to call the game. And since my daughter Charlotte had already rolled two Yahtzees while nobody else had rolled any, I told everyone we would just declare her the winner at the end because I thought her lead was insurmountable. But everyone complained and said, well, Dad, somebody else might roll two Yahtzees. And so I said, there's no way anybody else is going to roll two Yahtzees in just four turns. And in fact, if someone does, I will give them $20. But then my wife and all the other kids complained and said, well, that's not fair. Charlotte has already rolled two Yahtzees. It wouldn't be right if somebody else got $20 for rolling two Yahtzees and she doesn't get anything. And so I said, fine, if somebody rolls two Yahtzees, then I'll give everybody in our family $20. Now, in case you don't know, I have seven kids. Well, the kids decided to keep pushing me, and they said, well, what about the kids next door? And so I said, fine, if somebody rolls two Yahtzees, then I'll give the three kids next door $20. And so they said, well, what about their parents? And I said, fine, if somebody rolls two Yahtzees, I'll give their parents $20. And then they said, well, what about the guy who rents out their basement, Darian? And I said, fine. If somebody rolls two Yahtzees, I'll walk over to Darian's apartment myself and give him $20. And then they started to ask about other neighbors. But at some point, I finally said, hey, okay, no, no, no. Our home and the home next door because they're our best friends. Well, on the first round, my daughter Olivia, who was on my team, we were playing as a team, ended up rolling her first Yahtzee. And then on the very last roll of the game, she needed to roll three fives with three dice. And I calculated the odds later, and it was less than a half a percent that she would do that. But she did. And then this happened. <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't until after that happened I decided to actually calculate how much money I had committed to giving to the two Yahtzees. And so it was my seven kids, my wife, the three kids next door, their parents, and the guy living in their basement for a total of 14 people, which of course is $280 that my kids scammed me out of. So what does all this have to do with comics? Well, I think we can take a few lessons and apply it to our comic collecting. First of all, don't be impulsive when buying comics. Obviously, I was very impulsive in the words that I was saying. I didn't stop to think about the odds because I thought it was pretty astronomical that she would roll two Yahtzees, but it was still obviously super unlikely, but uh, it was like a half a percent, so it's not like insane but I should have calculated the odds a little bit better, but I made this impulsive decision and made these impulsive statements. And of course, as comic book collectors, we can make impulsive decisions as well. You know, some movie gets announced with a new character and all of a sudden the FOMO starts kicking in and you go on an eBay and spend three times what the comic will be worth in six months. Or you're bidding on an auction and you've reached the limit of what you're willing to pay but in the last few seconds, someone outbids you, and then you impulsively say, oh, well, I can increase my limit just a little bit more. And all of a sudden, you've paid way more than you meant to for that comic book. And so, of course, impulsiveness leads to poor decision-making when collecting comics, either overpaying for books or buying books that you really don't want. And then this leads to regret for overpaying on comic books or buying comics that you know a few months later you wish you hadn't. So don't be impulsive like I was. Number two, be intentional about every penny that you spend and recognize that every penny that goes towards one thing 
is one less penny you have to put towards a comic book grail that you love. And so this $280 that I just gave to my kids and neighbors means that I pretty much had to throw out my comic budget for the week. And so I'm a sad little wahoo because I would certainly rather that money have gone towards a grail that I love. And so you can examine your spending habits and see if there's any money that's going towards something that you don't really love that you'd rather go towards a comic book. And that can mean using self-control so that you don't buy comics that you don't really love. And so, for example, there's been several times that I've looked back and regretted buying, you know, 10 comics that I paid $10 each for that I thought were cool, but weren't ones that I loved and realized, man, if I hadn't bought these comics and I'd saved these pennies, then I would have a hundred more dollars to put towards a book that I really did love. Or it could mean cutting out things that aren't comic books. So maybe you could get Starbucks coffee one less time a week and all of a sudden have five more dollars that you could put towards a grail. At the end of a month, you have $20. And at the end of the year, you all of a sudden have $240, which can either get you a nice grail or almost pay off my debt to my kids and neighbors. Number three, don't let others sway or manipulate you. Now, my original deal had been to pay one person $20 but I had all these kids yelling at me from every side and all of a sudden I got swept up the emotion and was swayed or scammed. And listening to those voices cost me an extra $260. And when it comes to comic collecting, if you're watching this video, you probably watch other comic videos and obviously many of us give thoughts about what comics we think are good ones to invest in, but none of us can predict the future. And so you could easily be swayed and manipulated into buying a comic that then you later regret. So if someone suggests buying a comic, the advice might be good. But something I do and would encourage you to consider is just sleeping on it at night. You know, if there's a book that you really want, you should be able to find it the next morning. But just again, don't make impulse decisions and especially impulse decisions that are driven by other people. And really, just again, stick to buying comics that you really love. And finally, Number four, don't let your losses get you way down. Because if you're in this comic investing hobby long enough, there are going to be losses that you take. And the temptation is just to get really angry at the situation or maybe even angry at yourself for making a poor decision. But ultimately, that doesn't help at all. You know, recognize there's nothing you can do to change the past. And so once you've bought that comic book, there's nothing you can do to change it. And so there's no reason to carry regret. Though, of course, you should learn from your mistakes. <laughs> yeah, I'm certainly not going to make this deal if somebody rolls two Yahtzees to get anybody $20 again. So, so you can learn from your mistakes in the present so that you can make better decisions in the future, but you cannot change the past. And so there's nothing beneficial to just getting really angry about it. Now, obviously, again, there's disappointment. It's not like you have to get excited when you have a comic loss or something like that. But again, I'm talking about just getting way angry or way down. And really, the best thing you can do is, first of all, just laugh at your losses and, and not just comic book collecting, but in life. I've laughed a lot at this situation and just watch the video over and over and to learn to look on the bright side of a situation. You know, obviously, my kids were more excited than they've ever been on any Christmas morning. It was just such an explosion of joy, and I'll never forget that moment. And so I'm thankful for it, even though I'm not excited about uh, spending $280. I'm really thankful that it happened. It was just a great time, and of course, it's going to be a story that's told in our home forever, and I think that they'll tell it to their kids one day. And when it comes to the neighbors, they're actually getting ready to adopt a kid. And so we were planning to make a donation to their adoption fund anyway. And when I told them about this Yahtzee thing, you know, the dad was like, oh, you don't have to give us any money. And I said, well, I'm just going to put it towards your adoption fund. And so it's a way to help them out in their time of need. And so when you take an L like I did, you can think about the three L's. Learn from your mistakes, laugh at them and look at the bright side. Well, I hope you've also laughed at and learned from my situation. And if you had, then you could help me with another L by liking this video. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, help out a fellow who just lost $280 to feel better and subscribe. Comment below about a loss that you had that you can laugh at now. And as always, thanks for watching the video and I look forward to the next one and hopefully not losing 280 more dollars this week.